a little bit about uh, people who pretend to be doing things in the name of God. You know, when people claim to be the people of God and they use a false identity to claim that um, the world should, quote unquote, serve them, then that's going to cause all kinds of issues. Because if any child of the flesh who is not a child of God, the children of the flesh are not children of God, claims that they're the people of God, then the natural thing for the other natural man to do is to say, well, what makes you the people of God? And then that person is going to have to say, well, I'm the people of God based on what? What are you going to say? Now, with regards to people claiming to be the people of God, the chosen people, the Jews. If you claim that you're a Jew because you're born of the flesh and the blood of Abraham, you're going to have a problem. Here's the problem you're going to have. And it's, it's a really funny thing how no one addresses this. And you have so many people who supposedly have the scriptures. It says this, guys. I'm going to go up and then I'm going to go down. I'm going to show you this. Listen. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he, it didn't say they, it didn't say God is three distinct persons. He is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Now, here's the first question. People keep talking about, well, we got to rebuild the temple. You got all these so-called biblical scholars. And it says, God that made the world and all things therein, in, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Says he does not dwell in temples made with hands. Yet they're claiming, well, in the prophecy, uh, there's a problem because the dome of the rock there and we need to, that's in the way. And so we got to rebuild the temple. What are they going to rebuild the temple with? Problem number one. Now, the other thing is they'll say, well, we're of, the, the flesh and blood of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, of the seed of David, according to the flesh. This is what they'll say. Then they'll say, well, we need to build a temple. Why do you need to build a temple for? They say, well, we're going to build a temple so that we can worship God. Then it says, neither is worship with men's hands. So they're like, we're at the wailing wall, but we want to go into the temple. Right now, we're outside the temple. We need to get inside of the temple. And what they don't seem to really want to realize, and God is saying, your body is a temple and they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Right. God doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. Neither is he worship with men's hands. And it says God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And they that are in the flesh temple cannot please God. They that are in the spirit are pleasing to God because God's goodwill and pleasure is to give to them the free gift of eternal life. The spirit is life because of righteousness. So instead of people recognizing that, well, by temple, he spake of his body and he's saying the temple that needs to be destroyed is the old man of corruptible seed of the flesh, which perishes and goes back to the dust. That temple will not stand. And you need to be in the spiritual temple, the eternal temporal the, the, the house of God, which is a spiritual house, which cannot be destroyed, a temple not made with hands, but, but of God. And they're saying, but that temple is a temple that's a heavenly temple, right? But see, they don't want to recognize that. So what are they doing? The children of the flesh who are not the children of God, they create this false identity and then they take, they take on the, the, the identity, they take on the label. We are God's people. And then you have these arguments. Of course, you're going to have these arguments because you have. It says God is no respect of person. And it says. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God and they in the flesh can't please God. You have to ask yourself a simple question, guys. You guys have have been going to these so-called buildings made with hands call your churches, your synagogues, your mosques your halls, your temples, all these things that you, you claim that you're going to, to worship God. And of course, the people who are standing before you have no incentive to tell you the truth because they want the works of your flesh. So they lie to you and they tell you a lie so that you can't enter in. So, cause you can't, you know, flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter, right? Corruption cannot inherit incorruption. So they lie to you. 
So they give you this false, quote unquote, repentance. They say, well, hey, guys, they claim that they believe all these things, right? They claim they believe God and they claim that God is uh, uh, eternal. They claim that God is eternal. They say they believe that God's not a man. And he should lie. And he's a son of man. And he should repent. But the same people who say that say that they are the children of God without being born again. And it says they're the children of God are born, not of flesh, nor blood, nor the will of man, but of God. And it says the wind bloweth where it listeth, and now hear the sound thereof, and canst not tell from whence it cometh or whether it goeth. So all those who are born of the Spirit, God is the Spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. He's called the Father of spirits, and says the children of the flesh are not children of God. Now, when it says you're born of God, it says you're born of incorruptible seed, the Word of God that liveth and abideth forever. And when He says when you're born again, He says now you are a stone in the temple of God. You are a lively stone. In the temple or the spiritual house of God. But see, man, they don't like that. Because think about it. If I want to claim that I'm above you, right? A people above all people, and then I then on top of that, I'm gonna claim I'm a race. Now I'm a race above all races, then I'm like, how are you claiming you're a race above all races when you're not born again of of, of, of incorruptible seed? You pair you sin, they sin. You perish, they perish. Jesus said, my sheep never perish and the children of the flesh are not the children of God and you must be born again. So someone who wants the Lord over you would lie. They would claim, look, we who are greedy, we who are greedy men are going to create some false doctrine. And in our false doctrine, we're going to claim, we're going to claim that God actually is a man. You know, that, you know, God is spirit and flesh. We're going to claim, they say, we're going to claim that God is so-called three distinct persons. And the second person of this three distinct persons, who's the son, they say, is fully God, fully man, one person, two natures. And the two natures, they're saying what? Spirit and flesh. But they say one person. And then they say co-equal, co-eternal. The problem with the co-equal, co-eternal with the second person whom they consider to be the son is that Two natures of one of those two natures, one of those natures died. And you know that that nature that died is not what? Eternal. And if it died, if it's not eternal, then you can equate temporal with eternal. So it's not co-equal and it's not quote unquote co-eternal. Right. So all they've done is they tried to make God equal to man. That's all they've tried to do. Then they leave open clues all over the world as to why they created this lie. You go throughout the land and you see these paintings and murals and all these things, these tapestries of these so-called religious supposed relics and artwork. And you look and you see that they're just painting God as a white man. They paint God as three white men. They paint God as two white men and a bird. They paint God as three white men, two white men and a bird. And then they paint all the heavenly angels as white. These are the people who gave you the Trinity. These are the people who, who invented the doctrine. And then at that time, they claimed that they were a chosen race. Now, the people who lied and invented the Trinity, they went through what? Dominion theology and claimed that they were predestined and ordained by God, manifest destiny, manifest destiny to do what? Kill conquer and vanquish other nations in the name of God and to drive the so-called heathens out of the land, out of the land. And they would destroy all of the heathen temples. And when I say heathen temples, by temple, I speak of their bodies. So they say we must destroy this temple of Moloch. We must destroy these temples, these heathen temples. So they went and killed and murdered all these heathens because they said, you know what? These guys are all corrupt. These people are not even people. They're like beasts, they said. So they, that allowed them in their mind to say, these heathen are beasts. They're like dogs. We can drive them out of the land. And everybody knows that each produces after its kind. So if these heathens were beasts, then beast only can beget other beasts. And, you know, you can't mate 
with a beast and make something else. So if the beast had a baby, then the offspring of that baby would be a beast. That would just be a little temple. So better to stomp out the little temple before it became a big temple. So don't spare man, woman, nor child. They had a what? Scorched earth policy. Right? This makes sense, right? Is this making sense to you? So these people who claim, who designated and said, oh, we're, of course, we're the people of God who painted all these murals, all these things, all these paintings, all these tapestries, and basically essentially just made God a white man, a bit made God after their own image. And then said, well, if God is a white man and each producer after his kind, anyone who doesn't look like us, then of course they're not our kind. And then they said to themselves, well, since these guys are quote unquote like beasts, we need to stay pure. We can't mix seed with these beasts we can't worship with these devils right they said to themselves that they worship the one true god and all these other heathens heathen nations worship beasts therefore through their doctrine of manifest destiny and dominion theology according to their interpretation of the scriptures they were to use the sword of god to drive the heathen out of land to destroy the works of the what devil the works of darkness manifest destiny right so these people who designated themselves and you can tell what they think god looks like because they got paintings and pictures they got paintings all over europe they you can go into their museum most esteemed places Musée d'Orsay, louvre you can go to the london museum or you can go to new york you can go all over the world and you can see who they think God is. They painted many, many a pictures of who they consider to be God and his heavenly host and who his people are. This is not disputable. This is irrefutable. And according to the history which they wrote, which you can check, they said it was of their mission and they were decreed. They were manifest. God had chosen them to go into other nations, into Africa, into India, into Asia, in other parts of Europe. To all over the world, they said we were destined to go and what? To drive you out, to destroy the works of the devil, the works of darkness. To destroy the temples of Moloch. Right. So they said. If God be for us, who can be against us? And they said, God is with us, Emmanuel. So they said, since God is with us, then we got to drive them out. And they said, we're going to bring a light to these nations and we're going to use that light to destroy and scorch the works of the devil. Right. Again, since they have the one true religion and the one true God, they said we were not to what mix with the heathen nations. We were not to. Pollute, pollute their temple, right? And by temple, I spake of their body because they consider themselves to be the people of God. And if they're the people of God, then they're saying they're the what? The temple of God. So they consider themselves to be, quote unquote, one. A people above all people. And then they started classifying themselves as being a what? A race. Of course, they're a race of chosen race. And so based on the images, which you can see all throughout this given its evidence, guys, it's not something it's not even hidden. It's in open sight. It said the people who do not look, who do not look because each produces after its kind. The people who do not look like us. And the paintings which we which we painted with our hands. Then all those people are blasphemers. All those people are lost and in darkness. All those people are, quote unquote, barbaric heathens, that pagans that need to be destroyed, to destroy the works of the devil. And we need to keep ourselves as a race. We need to keep the temple. And by temple, I speak of their body. We need to keep the temple. What? Pure. Pure. So they said to themselves, we must make laws. They made what they call laws of segregation because they're not like other men, right? They're not like other men. They're not like other men. 
It's not that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. They say they were elect and they're essentially they're saying they were blameless in their deeds. Right. They they excuse they accused others and excuse themselves for what they have done. They were quick to cast stones at those dogs, those heathens, those people caught in the very act. So they looked and they studied and they examined these people. And every time they saw them doing something wrong, according to the law, they said, yep, they need to be punished according to the law of Moses. Scorched earth policy. They used the law to take over the land and they said it's rightly so. This 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 is us doing. And they said what we're going to do is we're going to destroy all the works of this land and then we can do we can quote unquote settle. Right. We can settle the land and we can we can quote unquote repopulate the land. They said to themselves in their heart and in their minds, they said to themselves, these heathens, these works of the devil, these temples of Moloch must what decrease. And because we're the people of God, we must what increase. So they went from land and sea to all these different nations to kill, to vanquish, to destroy the temples of Moloch. And by the temples of Moloch, I'm talking about all the people who weren't included as a part of the chosen race. And they said, these people must decrease and we must what? Increase. So they went to the Americas. They went to the quote, they went to Jamaica. They went to the Caribbean, right? And they saw that in all these lands that they went to, all they can see were sinners. They saw the sin of all the native people all over. And they said, God needs to bring a judgment unto these people. And they said, we are the servants of God and we were meant to do such a thing. God had manifested to us and his decree is that we were to go and to do his work. We are the woke hand of God. God is with us. Emmanuel. Right. So they, as the chosen race and their anti miscegenation laws, said we must remain pure as God is pure, as we painted him in all the ceilings and the roofs of the great buildings that we built from where we originated, right? So they kept on doing this. They kept doing this whole thing where they were doing. They said again, we who came from this place, who came by ship. We are, quote unquote, pilgrims. And what do they call them? Strangers up in the land. Pilgrims and strangers up in the land. And they needed to plant their seed, but they could not pollute their seed with the, quote unquote, corrupt seed of the natives. So they said we must destroy. Now, some of them, they, they some of them sin and they said, you know what? Some of them got a little bit weak. Some of them got a little bit weak. They saw some of the natives and they got a little bit weak. So they, they mix seed, they miscegenated, right? The pure race with the corrupt race, the pure seed with the impure seed, right? The men who the very people who they consider to be beast, they, this pure race of men that stand upright, not on four feet like dogs. Some of them practice miscegenation, a.k.a. bestiality. And they said, what you're doing now is you're 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 lessening our stock. You're you're polluting our stock. You're 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 regressing our stock. You're 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 devolving our stock. This is going to make us go back into devolution. This is, we, we are an advanced people, a civilized nation. We, we, this, what you're doing, this, they said, what you're doing is uncouth. But the record be told, this was a common practice. Many of them, they kept mixing and mixing and mixing. Corrupting their holy seed. Right? Nonetheless, when they had got into the land, 
They said, now, once we've conquered these people, if they could understand their role within, quote, the land that we've conquered, if they could understand that we're a people above all people and they could accept themselves as loyal subjects to us after being conquered by a more supreme and advanced race, then they would know that we can be we can be kind if they know their place. We can be gentle if they know their place. So they said, look, we will let you work the land that you no longer own. You don't have the right to the land. You don't have a right to defense. You don't have rights to guns. You don't right, have even have a right to testify. They put them under a special law, a different law, not the law that they were under. Because besides, in their mind, they were, quote unquote, doing the righteous works of God. So they use the natives to work the land, that they may be a servant of service because they consider themselves to be what? The servants or the people of God whom God had destined, who God had given them the knowledge where these people were told primitive. They didn't have the knowledge. These people were ignorant. They were ignorant beasts, but they were good for the what? They were good for the field. They were good for the field, right? They were good for the field. So they said, as we serve God in our righteous works, you can serve us. So the only way that you can be righteous is to be a servant of us because we do the righteous works of God. And by you telling us what to do, we can help you, quote unquote, get to a better life. So they said, now we have brought civilization and advancements and an enlightened, quote unquote, culture, an enlightened, quote unquote, civilization to the savages. Right. And they did this using the word of God. They did it using the word of God. Now, some of you will say, Marcus, that was the old times. That was back in the days when men was just acting all kinds of wicked. We have advanced. If it had been in that time, if I'd have been in that time, I wouldn't have done the sins of my forefathers. But therefore, you admit that you're their offspring. Right. You admit that you said that I wouldn't have done the things that my father did. Then you admit that you are their offspring. And remember the whole point of the anti miscegenation law was they thought they weren't like other men. They thought that, look, we we're a pure seed, a holy seed, and we weren't to mix our seed with the corruptible seed of those savages, those beast like people. After they had so-called rightfully taken over the land, which God told them and had decreed that they were the people who were to do what? Take over the earth. They said, since the earth belongs to God and God told us that we were manifest destiny to take over the land, then we didn't have to ask these quote unquote beasts. I mean, really, these are beasts within the land. They're not even truly men. So they say we don't have to ask the beast. We just simply drive out the beast. And because these beasts were going against them, obviously, since they were in the image of God, which they themselves had painted, of course, when you look in all the buildings, when you go and see it, you can see the buildings, you can see the heavenly visions. So to go against them, of course, was to go against what? God Almighty. God Almighty himself. And to go against God Almighty, any fool knows you can't win a fight against God Almighty. So if anyone who goes against God, then it is righteous to destroy anyone who goes against God. If God be for us, God dang it, who can be against us? That's what they said in their minds and in their hearts. That's what they said. Lord knows that's what they said. That's what they said in their mind. They said, I thank God you're with us.
We're not like those beasts. We're not like those savages. We're not like those heathen pagan nations. We are chosen. Chosen. So they sought in judgment of those people. They considered those other people to be worthy of death. And they said, look, we're going to cry aloud and we're going to spare not. Right? That's what they said. That is what they said. We gone past all that now, y'all. Nobody's using that tactic nor that strategy anymore. All these lies about, you know, the weapons are carnal and it's a literal carnal. We're going to drive out, quote unquote, the heathen by killing them. Right. We're going to destroy the enemy with the sword of God and all this kind of stuff. You know, all that stuff. If you were to try to tell people that it's spiritual, they don't like that. Mm -mm. If you were to tell these heathens, I mean, I mean, I'm sorry. If you were to tell these chosen people the people of God that they're sinners and there's not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not and he that committed sin is of the devil well they would excuse themselves they would say no not us they say you can't rank me as a race above all races with those savages that's what they would say, guys. That's what they would say. Sometimes these people who are going to these other lands had issues. Because sometimes they'd go to these other lands and the people who they encounter would be friendly. People didn't try to do anything to them. The people were quite friendly with them. Hey, how you doing? The people welcomed them. When your heart wants to steal, you have an issue then. When your heart seeks to do wickedly and you love earthly treasures and you're using the word of God to destroy and kill and rob and murder people. And let's face it, rape. You got an issue. Because you don't want the natives to be, quote unquote, friendly. You don't want them to exhibit any, quote unquote, what do you could say? Godly attributes, right? Because you see, you say, now, if I go and I catch him, you know, doing all kinds of craziness, then I can use that as my justification. But if I go there and they seem to be families and celebrating and minding their own business, I'm not looking for that in them, right? I'm not looking for how they're like me. I'm not looking how, well, they got customs and maybe a different language and different dress and all that stuff. But for the most part, they, they sin like the people from the land who we, we came from sin. No, you're going to make up all kinds of stories and how they were just the biggest and the greater sinners. They're the greatest sinners that ever walked across the planet. And what was their greatest sin? The greatest sin that they could have done is not recognizing that you're God's chosen people and falling down upon their knees, kowtowing and bowing to you and worshiping you as the almighty savior. Because you came to save them from darkness. But you said this people resist. The darkness resisted. Right? Guys, this is the same scenario we have today. God said, my kingdom is not of this world. He's talking about a temple in heaven. They sought a better country in heavenly. He said, love not the world, nor the treasures in the world. When he says to conquer using the sword or the how you have the whole armor of God, the helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, feet shot with the gospel of peace, sword, which is the word of God and the shield of faith, girded about with truth, he's not talking about destroying people and killing them and destroying the enemy, which is quote unquote, people who are sinners like you. He's saying, no, you must first be destroyed. You must die to self. And then once you're born of God and your weapons aren't carnal, 
Then you go back out with those weapons and you preach the word to destroy the enemy, which is what? Death. Death. Heathen just means a person who doesn't believe. And so you're supposed to convert all those so-called heathens to the faith. And by converting them, they're born again, a new creature. Old things are destroyed, passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The heathen unbelief must decrease and those who believe must what? Increase. Because if those people remain in their quote unquote temples, all those temples will perish. But all of those who are born of the what? Incorruptible seed, the word of God, the lively stones in the spiritual house of God. When, of course, that temple not made with hands whose maker and builder is God, that temple cannot be destroyed by man, period. And that war doesn't require lobbying, financing, lying to people in buildings, collecting money. It doesn't require all these lies. It doesn't require that you accuse other people of being greater sinners. So you guys look over and you see the, the Israel-Palestine conflict. Just remember that God already told you that his kingdom is not of this world. The children of the flesh are not the children of God. They in the flesh can't please him. He doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. Neither does he worship with men's hands. God is a spirit. You must be born again. The incorruptible seed, the word of God of the spirit that liveth and abideth forever and flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter the kingdom of God. The kingdom come not with observation and you can't get into the kingdom into you yourself. The old thing is destroyed. Your temple, which will not stand, must be destroyed. Let he that is among you who's without sin cast the first stone. Okay. With that, Let's talk about this thing. Let's talk about these people and their constant lies, constant, incessant lies, hearts so desperate that when they're on the verge of getting caught as just being white supremacists, they're going to sacrifice other so-called whites so that they can say, hey, we're not colonizing anymore. You see, we are victims, too. Now, the we who are victims, too, of course, is not going to be the rich, planning, globalist leader, so-called masters. It's, of course, the people they're willing to sacrifice for their cause so that they won't be, quote unquote, found out. They're willing to sacrifice people who look like themselves just so that they can keep the light going. They say, well, you know, the world's the, the world's hip to the game. The world is hip to manifest destiny. Now we got to repackage, right? And see, the people, all these people in this world who are deceived, who think they're, quote unquote, serving God in their flesh, when they that are in the flesh can't please God and, and his kingdom is not of this world. And God's saying, oh, your children are your children. Your children are born of your seed. Your seed is corrupt. Your children are not my children. You're not in my house. You didn't eat the bread of life. You didn't drink the living water. What are you talking about? I have no fellowship with you. Your whole world is a kingdom of darkness. And those people who said they were light. Guess what? If the light in thee be darkness, how dark is that light? They're not the light. They just light scanned it. Right. So people who claim and try to claim they're a chosen race who thank God they're not like other men. They need to understand they are like other men. There's nothing special about them. Nothing. There's nothing chosen about them unless you want to say that all the children of the flesh are chosen and predestined for the grave. Because despite the fact that they just hasten death for the quote unquote people who they consider to be beneath them through war to steal their land, they themselves follow those natives to the grave. Doesn't matter if they say I'm going to build a segregated cemetery. It's called being stupid. It's called being dumb. It's called being blind. Okay. 
It's talking about God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, and by temple he speak, with, speak of their body. Right? So when your mama or your daddy put hands on your mama, God's like, they in the flesh can't please me. He's like, no. Just because I come in the fashion of a man, I'm a spirit. Don't look at that outer man. That work of the flesh, which is temporal and mortal, does not give you eternal life. It's the spirit that quickeneth that giveth life. The flesh profiteth nothing. Neither is worship with men's hands. You have to ask yourself, what are they doing at the so-called wailing wall? What temple are they going to build? And then what's funny about it is now that the grift of colonization has evolved, you don't even understand that the reason why they claim to be Israel and you say that you're the so-called church and that if you believe that the church is Israel, they say that's replacement theology. The only reason why they say that is the same reasons they said that they weren't supposed to, quote unquote, mix seed with the natives. They're saying that you're lesser. The church is lesser and their Israel is what? Above, above all people, above all people, or as they classify themselves, a race above all races. They say, well, we're a race and a religion, meaning they're a race based religion, a race based religion. They're racialist. Racialist. And the only reason race was created, the only reason race was created is to practice racism. That is the only reason race was created. There was no need. You can look it up. There was no need for this classification of race until people start saying, well, you're going to have to do this Darwinist thing, this eugenics philosophy, this eugenics lie, this science falsely so-called to try to categorize and say that some people are above people and some people are beneath other people, et cetera, et cetera. The racialist religion chosen race is a racialist religion, religion invented by men. That has nothing to do with God because he even told you the children of the flesh can't please God. So what in the hell is a, a racialist religion got to do with anything? So now they're saying, look, Israel is a people above all people, a race above all races, and all the other races are what? Beneath. That's why they say if you bless God's chosen race above you who serve God, then God's chosen race who serve God can bless, quote unquote, you who are beneath them. Do you, you understand? See, you didn't know you was the field Negro in this scenario, did you? You didn't realize that, did you? Oh, you didn't realize you was the field Negro. I know y'all didn't. Americans didn't realize that. They didn't realize they was considered the field Negro. Yeah, if you supplied the money, the military spending and all this kind of stuff and helped them fight the war, which why would they want peace? Why would they want pe How do you make, let me, I'm going to have to give you guys just some basics. I'm going to have to tell you some earthly things. When it says, what does it profit if a man gain the whole world and lose his soul? Love not the world, nor the things in the world. Store not for yourselves treasures on earth. What do you think they're fighting for? Treasures on earth. Well, when you fight, if our weapons aren't carnal and we don't need money. And since God is the one who fights our battles through what it talks about, it's spiritual. Is not quote unquote carnal, right? I don't need to quote unquote get some money to say the words that I speak to you, they're a spirit in their life, and I preach the word in season and out of season to produce what? Children of God to destroy the works of the devil. I just preach the gospel. The devil's kingdom, the children of the flesh, they're already set to be destroyed, they're predestined to, to perish. <laughs> They're already predestined to perish. Oh, you're telling me I can go hasten their death? Yes, I can go hasten their death. Yes, I can. The, I'm talking when I say I, I'm talking about the the I, the, the old man could do that. The child of the flesh can do that. The I who's of the spirit, I don't partake in that. I don't partake in the death. I don't partake in the affairs of this world. Right? Love not the world, nor the things in the world. But they who want to conflate, they want to mix the spiritual with the so-called carnal. This is what they want to do. They want to mix the seed 
the incorruptible seed of God with the corrupt seed of man. And then they said, well, you know, let's let's do something better. Let's 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 bring it all down and make it about the earth and just say, well, we're a race above all races. So what they did is they said, instead of it being about heaven, it's about this world. Instead of it being about born of the incorruptible seed, it's about being born of the chosen race seed. And then we're not supposed to be mixing with the quote corrupt seed of those who are below us. You didn't get you. You didn't know you was to feel Negro in this scenario, did you? They fooled you. See, they made you get lifted up in pride because you said, well, I'm white, too. And they said, well, we're white, but we're not white, white. That's why they had World War II. And they said, no, we're going to defeat white supremacy. And they said, well, white supremacy has been defeated. Now God has a chosen race and they're called the Jews. You say, well, some of these Jews, they sure look white. And they said, well, no, we're not. White. Don't don't see us as white, white. And that allowed them to stab you in the back. Right. That allowed the white supremacists of old to stab you in the back. Because they're not loyal to you. You should have known that. Because before they went to Africa, Asia, the Americas, they were conquering in Europe. You should have known when they were painting those murals, they were, quote unquote, gassing you up then. You should have known they'd stab you in the back. But since you've fallen for the lie of the categorization of, quote unquote, well, I'm a. My, my my team is team race this and my team is team race white and my team is team race black and my team race is team race this. since you think that you're not like other men and you're of a special group of people according to the flesh they said well we're going to use that pride we're going to use that pride you got boy they said look how great the things we do and look at these savages and look at what they do you are more intelligent you're more beautiful. You're more pleasing to sight and pleasing to the eye. You're all these things that they are not. And those people, they deserve to quote unquote die, right? Those people are not like us. Those people are savages. Those people are criminals. Those people are what? Unworthy of life. Those people can't manage things. So they're not good stewards of the land. God should give it to somebody who has the, the intelligence and the faculties to actually manage and cultivate the land and really bring it to to be fruitful and multiply. So they must decrease. We must what? Increase. But see, now you got a people above all people, a race above all races. You can check the budget. <laughs> you can check the budget of your country and you can see that you're giving a lot of money and a lot of support. So you're paying, quote unquote, what? Tithes and offerings to the chosen race. Not just in money, but in military and in fighting and all these things and all the stuff that you're giving to these people, is it going to help them get eternal life? No. All it is is to hasten death, to help them think that they're a people above all people and thank God they're not like other men. They're a chosen race. And since you're aiding and abetting and you're saying, I co-sign with you, I stand with you. This is what you say. I stand with Israel. They're not the Israel of God. But you stand with them, even though six million perish. Kind of a hint, kind of a clue. Because if their forefathers perished, that might be a little hint, given that Jesus said, my sheep never perish. But you stand with them until you're not standing. But hey, since you have a false God, what will happen is you won't believe the truth and you'll die in unbelief. And I hope you enjoyed your time here. Right? You have your reward. You're esteemed highly of men. You lived your sumptuous life. You have your reward. It says God dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is he worshiped with men's hands as though he needed anything. I, I, I think you I think you guys need to tell you need to tell you need to tell your pastor this. You you need to tell your rabbi. You need to tell your Iman. Oh, that's right. You say, you know, you're just like you're just like the colonizers. Now you you're teaching the social gospel. We're teaching the social gospel. You know, guys, we colonized Africa. Cue the commercial. 
Look, look at little Tumbutu and his sister in his village. They need clean water. They need bread. They need clothing. 